So welcome back to Latin. Uh, let's go over these lectiones that you guys entered into the form last night. Um, yeah, and just looking ahead, uh, next week we will do a translation quiz at the end of the week. And then the week after that we'll start chapter 18, where things start to get even trickier. But uh, yeah, hopefully your vocab quiz goes well today. Um, and I would just really like if you guys whip out uh, basically this um, relative pronoun chart, whether it's in your notes or if you're just looking at the, the inferior one in the textbook. Um, either way, it's fine. But yeah, I'm not going to paste it onto every slide. But um, yeah, this chapter is about relative clauses. So most of these are going to have relative clauses. Um, and those are pretty impossible to parse if you don't know the different cases of qui qui quad. So we're still learning those cases of qui qui quad. It's not that bad um, uh, to, to kind of get the hang of it. But um, yeah, with every new pronoun, it's uh, a semi-frustrating um, experience of, of having to learn a slew of new forms. Okay, quam iucundi sunt illitre libelli quos mihi nuper misisti. Um, okay, so this one is not too bad, but there's something kind of difficult about it. I'm underlining the relative clause. By the way, as you're checking this, I want you to try to translate it in your head uh, while the Latin is on the screen and, and, and the translation is not on the screen yet. But then once I actually flip to the translation, that's when you can check down to your homework. And just a, a, another note on the homework before we keep moving is I want you to actually write the translations down somewhere other than just the Google form, um, preferably on your actual like notebook. Uh, but yeah, you just need to be able to check it um, and have it somewhere other than just the entry part of the Google form. Um, so the, the sneaky thing about this is uh, something we saw before in those exercises on Wednesday, right, uh, I believe, which is qualm. Qualm is definitely identical to that feminine accusative singular relative pronoun, but it can also just be the interrogative pronoun how. So that's what it's going to be here. Um, it is the first word, so it kind of follows the rules that I mentioned on Wednesday in terms of whether it's going to be how or which that or who or whatever. Um, so let's, this this first little main clause, uh, which is the part that is not underlined, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. There might be some vocab issues. Uh, Eucundus is new-ish and Labelli is new-ish as well. But it shouldn't have been too hard to get how sweet are those three little books. Um, so this reminds me of something Catullus would, would write. Uh, uh, so, yeah, we just have, eucundi is kind of our um, predicate, uh, adjective, substantive, adjective, uh, and then illi, tre, libelli are the things it's being um, attached to via the predicate suit, the verb suit, though not too bad. Um, those three little books, that's the way you want to do, illi, tre, libelli. Um, it's kind of the subject, though technically eucundi. Our, it might be our, our substantive adjective subject here. And then we enter our relative clause. So this is the more relevant part uh, in terms of the, the grammar of this chapter. So quos. What is quos? So let's look down at that chart. Oh, I've already bolded it. Quos is accusative plural masculine. Uh, and I mean, that's straight out of second declension. So that, that long OS ending should uh, be you know pretty familiar. Um, and okay, so even though in my chart I have it normally written as just like we're translating date of accusative ablative as whom, remember that's just going to be if its antecedent is a person. So me thinks that we are talking about these three little books, and books are not quite people, though really good ones almost seem like people, maybe. Uh, but uh, this is a... Um, a time where we want to use that or which. Uh, so uh, I'm going to move ahead now to the second part. So which, those three little books, which you have sent 
and we'll talk about that, to me recently, mihi nuper. So quos is actually the direct object of this relative clause. Uh, it's accusative, so that's pretty much all it's going to be. And the masisti, that might have given you some pause. That is that weird second person singular perfect uh, tense um, form of mito mitra. So it's you have verbed, uh, which you have verbed to me. Mihi is our indirect object. Mihi is always an indirect object, pretty much, I guess. Sometimes it's state of a purpose, but mostly it's IO, indirect object. And nuper is just an adverb. So yeah, this one's not too bad. This is a, a nice way to ease us in. The one thing they're being sneaky about is the qualm. But uh, yeah, we definitely talked about how qualm doesn't have to be a relative pronoun on Wednesday. Okay, number two is uh, one we did before spring break for an example when we were first learning the chapter. So technically you only had to do four sentences for homework. Um, if you like remembered it or even just like went back and like watched the video. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I will say this is the sentence I used uh, for the older kids for their translation quiz. Just saying. Because um, it it's a pretty good example. Uh, and let's see. So I'm going to flip ahead now. The, the, the tricky part of this is simply that there is a relative clause in the middle of the sentence disrupting our larger main clause. Um, itakwe. And so our subject is thousands. And so thousands, Melia, of these troops, harem kopiarum, of these troops. Uh, that harem, it might almost look unfamiliar to you, but it's, it's from Hikaikok, right? Kopiarum is going to be troops, not supplies. It's plural. And it's genitive, so thousands of these troops. And then we start our relative clause, which we do need to translate before we finish the main clause. Um, so we want to take the cue from the Latin syntax or word order. Um, so quibus is going to be, is that going to be ablative or dative? Because uh, it could be either. But when I move through the relative clause and see that the final word in the relative clause is dedit, which is from dodare, which you may or may not. No, since it looks so different than Dodari. Uh, I'm thinking I need an indirect object. So to whom? Um, oh, it's weird I wrote to which. But yeah, to whom? Because we're talking about these troops. Um, so which is okay, I guess. But uh, but yeah, whom is better. And you, you don't even technically need the two. You could just say, and so thousands of these troops whom Caesar gave mercy. So the two is kind of optional, but it just clarifies exactly how it's functioning. And then Caesar is the subject, right? That's just his name, the nominative. Clementium is our direct object. It's our red accusative direct object. It's the direct object for the relative clause. Um, and then dedit is perfect tense, so it's gave. Caesar gave mercy. And then we actually finish our main clause. Either, out our new conjunction, either uh, neglect duties, plural, officia is the direct object of the main clause, or... Uh, do not understand them. So, honestly, one of the weirder things about this is just that Aya is kind of echoing Ophicia, and that it is a uh, demonstrative here. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, we would just probably translate it as them, as in the duties. Um, another way of doing this would just to be re repeat Ophicia. But, uh, yeah, we have this compound direct object going on, um, and and both of the direct objects get their own verb. So honestly, it's like the, the the main clause is probably weirder than the relative clause. And it is kind of long. But other than that, this, this shouldn't be too tricky. And oh, uh, by the way, as you can see, I'm using pink for genitive now. Uh, I'm kind of like running out of colors at this point. And um, it's kind of hard to draw lines with arrows like I do on whiteboards for genitives. Um, on a PowerPoint, so I'm going to use pink. So pink is our genitive color from now on. All right, and quiz is uh, blue is still going to be our indirect object. Um, that was kind of already a thing. All right, moving on. Number three, quintum ex viris quibus cum trans maria difficilia navigabras ad urbum uh, So this one's not too bad. The the nasty thing about this is that there once again is a relative clause in the middle of this sentence. And it is not set off in commas, which is common, but it, it yeah, it's just like, it can feel overwhelming when you don't know exactly what your relative clause is. But the trick is just to basically look for your qui quad, 
which in this case is quibus cum. That also may have given you pause, but I have mentioned that we can attach cum to the end of a what kind of, what case of quiquiquad? quad? An ablative, yeah, cum always takes an ablative, right? So this is just quibus plus cum. So that's where a relative clause starts and it ends with a verb, right? So first of all, ex viris is an ablative with a cardinal number. Don't forget about those guys. That's pretty easy, right? Kittum is technically the subject, but then ex viris tells us how, uh, or uh, what kind of, um, like what we have that numbers 100. You have 100 of men, um, uh, or even, yeah, we want to say, a uh, hundred of the men, probably. But then, um, back to where what I was saying, quibus cum trans maria difficilia navigavaras is our relative clause. And I really want you guys to draw like a big circle around it or underline it, whichever works for you. But that is just going to help so much um, to kind of uh, differentiate the main clause from the relative clause, which is really the whole thing, the whole trick to this chapter. Um... So yeah, you want to get uh, used to that. When the relative clause is like on one side of the sentence and the main clause is on the other, it's way more straightforward than something like this, where it's just smack dab in the middle and the commas are not there to help us see it as being separate. We have to rely on qui qui quad starting it off and then a verb ending it. Um, okay, so a hundred of the men... And then we're going to translate that relative clause before we finish the main clause. The main clause itself is very simple, but clearly we're meant to translate the relative clause before we finish it off. So 100 of the men, and then quibus cum, that's going to be like with whom, right? Uh, we're describing people, so we want to use a form of who. And out of who, whose, and whom, a dative counts as an objective case. So it's going to be whom. Um, so with whom. Uh and then Navagavaras is a second person, singular, pluperfect. So with which you, that's our subject, because Navagavaras is second person. Remember, guys, the relative clause has its own subject that is separate from the main clause. It has its own everything, basically. Uh, so you had sailed across the difficult seas or oceans. Um. So I used red for direct objects, and I wish I had something that was like, uh, maroon. This is just kind of like a rusty red color, but that can be our accusative object color versus the green ablative uh, color um, and, the, and the just like normal red accusative direct objects. Okay, so across the difficult seas, trons takes an accusative is what I'm saying. And then we just finish off the main clause, which is, you know, wildly straightforward. Uh, came to the city or were coming when Yevant is imperfect. So a hundred of the men with which you had sailed across the difficult seas came to the city. Uh, an odd urban, once again, is an accusative object of odd. And it is, um, yeah, it's it's the same case as Maria de Ficilia. Okay, number four. Quad magister senex fuit caicus donat docia quae discipuli miserat non bene videri poterat. Okay, I remember thinking this was like wildly difficult when I did it with the 8th and ninth graders like a month ago, but I think I was kind of uh, exaggerating it. It's not that bad, but it, it, once again, just like number one, it's trying to trick us up, uh, trip us up with quote here, which can be a neuter relative pronoun, meaning like who, which, or that, uh, probably which or that since it's neuter. Um, and it's less likely to describe a person. But uh, here it's just going to be the conjunction because. Uh, so yeah, they're just they're throwing us those curveballs so that we are used to these um, uh, these various interpretations uh, of the same word, basically. Or it looks like it's the same, but it, it, it can be different words. Okay, because, and then the rest of, we, we have a main clause here basically but up until the comma, and that's not bad. You might have, um, Fuit might have thrown you off. It's from sum essay. It is the perfect of sum essay. Sum essay is to be. So this is just because the old master 
was blind. Cynics can be a noun for old man, but here, since it's already next to a noun, another noun, magister, um, it's going to be an adjective. So it's going to be the old teacher or old master was blind or has been blind. Let's let's go with was for fuit. Um, I know you might think was is something we use for imperfect, but I just think has been it sounds clunky, so we can go with was. Uh, was blind. Kaikis is a new adjective. Um, so yeah, if anything, you you probably just ran into a vocabulary issue with this this first part. Um, and yeah, I definitely don't blame you guys if you thought quote was going to be which or that or who. That's like the whole uh, kind of obstacle with this first part that they, they want us to be encountering. Uh, because the old master was blind, and then we run into the crazy part. Um, again, it's, it's not quite as bad as uh, um, I maybe made it out to be at one point. But dona dokia is weird because this is a neuter noun, donum, back from chapter 4. It's gift, right? This is a sweet gift or sweet gifts. Um, but it can be a subject or a direct object, and it turns out it's actually a direct object, and that's what makes it weird. Um, and then, quae discipuli miserant, that is going to be a relative clause. So we have a direct object. We don't quite know what to do. Uh, we don't know what to do with it yet. Um, and then we have a, a little relative clause disrupting the rest of this main clause. And so we want to translate that as like, because the old master was blind, the sweet gifts, and then we start a relative clause, which the students had sent. So had sent miserant. This is the second pluperfect we've seen so far, right? It's from mito, mitra, missi. Uh, so this is third person, plural, pluperfect. So had sent. Uh, Kwai is a relative pronoun, and its antecedent is the gifts. Um, and then we have the rest of the, the main clause, which actually clears up what we need to do with or these gifts. Or, or how we're thinking about these gifts. Uh, and so that would be, he had not been able to see well. So there is some flexibility with syntax. I could also see someone ending up with, because the old master was blind, he had not been able to see the, the sweet gifts well, which the students had sent. Uh, but, I mean, just saying that just now, it sounded kind of clunky. So honestly, this is not, um, the way that the Latin word order is, is actually pretty, uh, Pretty close to how we would likely say this in English. Um, so yeah, Paterat's from Pasum, right? So had not been able to see. Um, Paterat, its tense matches that of miserant in that it is, um, oh, it's not pluperfect, sorry, it's imperfect. Um, so it's, it just was not able, is, is better actually, sorry about that, um, was not able to see well. I'm using this new, I'm just using the video capture on the Keynote, which uh, is better because it's not cropping the top and bottom of my slides like last week. But now I can't like jump out and um, make corrections, which I kind of miss. But yeah, okay, so so was not able to see well. All right, all right. That one, I think it's just, it's really crazy because of the word order. And it's also starting off with quad. Last one for the day, levis est labor quim bene toleramus. It's the most straightforward one. We do have a relative clause here, but it's only three words, and it's right at the end. So the reason this is easy is because it's the relative clause is totally separate from the main clause in that it's divided up perfectly. The first three words are the main clause, and the last three words are the relative. And levis is this newish third declension adjective, meaning light. Um, so light is the work which, quim, we tolerate well. So quim is a, an accusative direct object and its antecedent is labor, um, which is, you know, pretty much the subject of this main clause. Though, once again, uh, technically speaking, levis is a substantive additive serving as our subject. Um, and labor is like an object complement. Uh, so toleramus, tolero, tolerare, uh, very easy verb to translate. And remember, it's just good old present tense. And that's it for today, guys. Uh, I will post your homework grades, that'll be the first grade for the last quarter of school, which is kind of exciting. And then we will start to finish up this chapter next week. Uh, yeah. All right. You guys have a good weekend. Uh, and I will just talk to you on Monday.